While sim racing is a great way to get the thrill of racing wheel to wheel from the comfort of your home, it is not able to fully simulate all of the nuances of real world racing. In some situations, that can be a detriment. For example, sim racers are not able to feel the full g-forces of driving in a race car. On the flip side, we are fortunate not to have some of the more negative elements of real life racing. Here is a list of some of the top things I feel that we, as sim racers, take for granted. As with any hobby, sim racing can become quite the investment. While the entry point can be inexpensive, if you want a full high-end setup with motion, direct drive, high-end pedals, and so on, you can easily put tens of thousand dollars into your sim racing setup. For example, a solid turnkey motion setup can retail for over $20,000. When people hear that, one of the most common questions they ask is, why don't you just buy a used Miata and race it? However, let's try to break that cost down. A couple of years ago, I found a spec Miata race car on Craigslist for $6,000 in fairly decent condition, albeit with a salvage title. Not factoring in damage, I would estimate around $1,000 per race in tires, fuel, and travel expenses. With the same budget allocated to a high-end sim racing rig such as the Sim Experience Stage 5, which runs around $26,000, I'd say I could take my spec racer Miata to about 20 race weekends. Some people may say that those 20 race weekends might provide a more enjoyable experience than sim racing. However, in my mind, sim racing provides greater longevity. I've invested maybe around $7,000 in my sim racing setup over the past decade, which has made for hundreds of enjoyable races. Let's continue on with the Spec Miata example. If I wanted to race around my area, there are three major road courses in Northern California, Sonoma Raceway, Laguna Seca, and Thunder Hill. Three more are in Southern California, Auto Club Speedway, Willow Springs, and Button Willow. Sonoma Raceway is around a half hour drive from my house, but Thunder Hill, the next closest track, is two and a half hours away. Auto Club Speedway is seven hours away, which would be a full day's worth of driving. If I wanted to take my hypothetical MX-5 Cup car to an SCCA event at Sebring, that would likely be at least a three-day drive after factoring stops and maybe sleeping at a hotel. However, thanks to sim racing, I can go from my home track all the way to a track such as the Nürburgring Nordschleife in a couple minutes. We have thousands of tracks available at our disposal spanning multiple racing simulations, allowing us to go to any track almost instantaneously. No long drive, no paying for gas money. Even factoring in our Factor 2's atrociously long loading times, it would still take less time to load a track in our Factor 2 than to drive to my local track. In real racing, you'd likely be financially limited to just one car. Maybe, if you have a larger budget, you can swing both karting and road car racing. However, on the sim racing side, there are thousands of cars available. In a set of course alone, in addition to the wide stock variety, there are hundreds of different mods with an insane variety of cars available at your disposal. Even on the more expensive side, iRacing has over 70 vehicles available. With a few clicks, you can jump from a Mazda Miata Cup car to the McLaren MP430 Formula 1 car. The variety available in sim racing is simply staggering, and I think it's one of the things sim racers take for granted the most. In sim racing, we sort of have the ability to warp time. By that, I mean we have the ability to make changes instantaneously that would usually take a while in real life. Spin out and wreck your car in a practice session? Press the escape button and you magically warp to your pit box with a new car. Need to change your gear ratio? A few clicks and it's done. In real life, if you wreck your car, you either have to limp your way back to the pits or get towed back and then spend time repairing the car or replacing it with a backup. Need to adjust your gear ratio? Then you're going to need to spend quite a bit of time to get that done. Sim racing allows you to be able to make these changes far quicker, and I think it's definitely something that we take for granted. Crashing is a part of racing, and like it or not, you're going to eventually wreck. As sim racers, we really take the way we handle crashes for granted. 
A few years ago, there was a moment that really cemented this point in for me. I went with a friend to Sonoma Raceway to drop by a professional racing team, Cameron Racing. The crew was working on repairing an Audi R8 GT3 race car, which had encountered damage during the previous race. The damage was relatively minor, with the front right suspension and bodywork having minor damage. Talking with the head of the team, Steve Cameron, he talked about the financial side of the repairs. The grand total for the repairs for the car was over $30,000. Imagine if you had to pay to repair your car after a typical iRacing GT3 race. You'd likely get mob bosses knocking on your door after a couple races. On the sim racing side, we have never had to deal with the financial repercussions of racing. We have never had to pay for the fuel that goes into our virtual cars, like how we've never had to pay to repair our virtual cars. iRacing comes close with the safety rating mechanic working somewhat similarly to a currency system, but sim racers have never had to pay real life currency to repair a virtual car. These are just some of the things I feel that sim racers take for granted. There are many more things. What do you think we take for granted? Let us know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.